evolution says that change occurs. Well, actually, uh, let's start with the well, uh, natural may selection. May I clarify for a moment? The, uh, just a second, please. In um, evolution, you've got two processes going on. Random mutations, different types are born. You've got all kinds of different uh, creatures, whatever they are, and they've got different genes. That's random. Natural selection says that the environment favors these, these die out. Selection eliminates, and selection is direction. It selects in the direction of whatever the uh, current environment, whether it's a farmer selecting or uh, an environment where you've got to have the longer fur to keep you warmer. Small things can make a difference in the survival of an animal. And what I'm saying is, yes, change occurs, but evolution says it happens on a huge scale. And one animal can completely change down the line like a dinosaur into a bird. Big change. What I'm saying is change occurs. We got all kinds of dogs, dozens and dozens of dogs. They're all dogs. They can interbreed. Some okay. of them well, not. Well, if they're physically able to. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't <laughs> breed uh, I've heard stories. Uh, in nature. Yeah, I, I, I've heard stories I'm not going to get into, yeah, but... I'm hoping they don't, for the... <laughs> who just say? Ohio or New Jersey, therefore they can't agree. Okay. So physical geographical uh, limitation. If you take the egg and the sperm, put them together, you will end up with a dog. I'm sorry. And Provided the laboratory. female is large enough to handle. No, I'm talking the about other. doing a laboratory for Pete's sakes and then to transport it into a female that is large enough to handle. But that wouldn't uh, be natural it's the, selection. Well, it, it, it's selection. He, he, uh, Darwin got his ideas from the breeding of pigeons. Um, the point is that selection is directional, the random mutation is not. It's not fair to say evolution is random, it's not fair to say it's directional. Both events are going on. What I'm saying is that in this direction that you're going, you're losing information, you're not gaining useful information in the genome. Occasionally, that can happen. I'm not going to deny that. But the overall pattern is a loss of information. Um, when I read, when I read uh, this paper I found on the internet, I didn't know who these guys were, uh, Anton Roski from uh, Switzerland University and uh, Cooper from uh, Medical College in Wales. When I first ran across this, they were the same size on this paper. And it was the third reading, I think, through trying to understand this stuff that I realized, you know, up here we've got uh, 21,000 and down here we've got 11,000 and these were not to scale on the paper. So my wife did these to scale, very carefully, I might add. And uh, this is uh, development from the uh, Human Genome uh, Study. They have a database of the human genomes. Uh, this is the nucleotides. These are the uh, deletions. Uh, these are the insertions. And the overall pattern is a loss by a margin of three to one if you want to add information, an insertion is the mutation you need to look at. And unfortunately, there's three times as many deletions in the human genome is you know, disease <coughs> and change. Isn't that were true? No. There, there I, are I, various assumptions in that. Yeah. Um, taking into account vast swaths of DNA that are, for whatever reason, turned off, can be turned back on. It isn't necessarily necessary to insert new information in well, ultimately, when you're going from a single cell organism up to a complex organism, you will need that. Sorry, I thought you were talking about humans. Up oh. here, in oh. humans, they have this uh, uh, studied now. They're working on the genomes of other animals. Um, hopefully, in the future, as science progresses, we'll have a better picture. But uh, the uh, direction I saw here was not favorable. I'll let you have that. It's on the internet. Um, you can do a search for uh, those names on the internet and you'll come up with uh, well, more than a dozen, I think, papers that those men have been involved with. Uh, they're not 
fly-by-night guys. I, I did a search just to see how credible their paper was, because information off the internet's not necessarily uh, the best. Well, actually, that's why you get information from multiple sources and average it out. That usually always gives you your best information. Uh, you take it from one source, and yeah, you never know what you There's an element of truth that I would agree with. The fruit fly that was being discussed earlier, uh, it has this little bitty uh, wing here, and they've managed to, through mutations, many, many mutations, produce uh, small, medium, large wings. These guys don't fly worth a darn. Uh, they even have ones where they're virtually wingless, and they're no longer flies, they're walks. That's why the, those are saleable. You can sell them if you can come up with a permanent mutation, a permanent species. Uh, very saleable. These, they have to breed every, uh, every few generations. In, in all the uh, mutations that they've done with these flies, in the natural world, they would be selected out of the gene pool. You don't have an improved superfly over here. Um, I think it would suggest that uh, evolution means improvement. Or so. Well, like I say, it, it, it's only improvement in the fact that Selection gives you a direction. And improvement would be improvement for the environment it in, uh, inhabits. Align with the environment they have to be. Right. Um, uh, Darwin, when he uh, was uh, looking at natural selection, I had a pin here a moment ago. Darwin's, uh, here. It's supposed to be a bell curve, use your imagination. Uh, basically, you have a population of all sorts, and uh, say the weather changes. And so these animals out this side have greater fur, they can withstand the cold better, so you tend to have this selected out. They die off, these survive, and then evolution says, you know, your next curve is going to look more like this, and you go in the direction of uh, more fur bearing, maybe more fat, that sort of thing, and um, you get a change because of the environment. In um, and, and that makes a certain amount of intuitive sense. However, if you um, look at a stationary, uh, I shouldn't say stationary, uh, a constant type of environment, uh, you really don't have any drive for a direction. Uh, the plains of Africa, lions, biggest, baddest lion out here, biggest, strongest guy, he gets the largest number of females, he becomes a very attractive target. Two other lions, usually brothers, gang up on him, not only kill him, kill all of his cubs, so they've been selected out, and no survivors from them. On the other hand, the weak lion down here, who can't draw any females, his genes are selected out, and you end up then with what Blythe saw as maintaining the population. 